Hello, hello everyone, it's Stray Faye here with another episode of Cupid Parasite. Continuing with Alan's Route, this is our second episode on Alan's Route. Uh, they threw a lot of information at us last time. I'm kind of glad they did though. Um, they didn't really dance around the issue that um, Alan is indeed an incubus. Um, Lynette learned that fact very quickly. <laughs> and there's some interesting uh, little tidbits that we got um, as like Lynette was dreaming and like many, many, many theories forming about who Alan could be. Possibly hinting that he might be some sort of fallen god. Um, because he seems to know Lynette, but Lynette doesn't remember him. So some sort of amnesia. Common, common with lots of protagonists. Uh, the Rune Factory Syndrome, where, where the protag just conveniently forgets, forgets lineage. Um, and yeah, I'm very eager to get into the next chapters. Uh, let's just start right away, I guess. Uh, we got the next chapter, Cupid in Love. I'm guessing... We're back in Celestia, so maybe this is like... Maybe this is like the background of like a past Cupid, the one that fell in love with Psyche. Uh, once upon a time, there was a very beautiful princess named Psyche. Her beauty reached even the gods of heaven, making Venus, the god of beauty, jealous. Venus, out of jealousy, plotted to make Psyche fall in love with an ugly human. Uh, is this- is this the same Venus? Cupid, shoot Psyche with the golden arrows so that, the, so that she will fall in love with that ugly man. Yes, ma'am. Cupid, obedient to his mother, heeds her wishes and approaches Psyche with the arrow. And just as he was about to shoot his arrow, Cupid accidentally wounds his own finger with the golden arrow. Oopsie. Thus began the love affair between Psyche, a human, and Cupid, a god. Got hurt by his own powerful arrow. Alright, back to Lynette, I guess. And the next day after work, I went to Pillow Luxuria by myself. Oh, is Lynette gonna offer herself as a meal? That's right, she's like... She's losing all these clients, because, <laughs> because, uh, Alan keeps feeding on them, and they keep breaking up, uh, their relationships, because the dreams are better. That's why our company is in so much trouble. Alan, please eat in moderation. Just when I thought you came in with such an amazing expression, you start with that complaint again. It's because you're- it's because you're causing so much trouble! You've been eating too much lately, haven't you? You'll get fat! Can you get fat on dreams? No matter how many dreams I eat, I, I'll never get fat. But when a woman has her dreams eaten, she doesn't care about reality anymore! Sounds like my dreams are too good. It's what you do in your dreams! But don't you usually fall more in love with your real lover after you've met the one in your dreams? If it's in moderation, where well, your dreams are too intense, there's a big gap between a real life partner and fantasy. The man in the dream is great, but the man in reality is dull. That's why they're losing interest. I see. I'm amazed by my own powers as a high rank demon. I guess dreams are becoming more attractive than reality. I was annoyed by the smug look. There was a part of me that even that even though I was being complimented on how attractive I was. Then don't eat any more dreams. <laughs> Just telling him not to eat though. <laughs> but I glared at him as hard as I could. Alan smiled vaguely and rested his cheek on his palm with his elbow on the counter. But I can't live without dreams. I have to have at least one meal a day. I'll starve to death, you know. The goddess of love, Cupid, cares more about love than my life. If you live, you can fall in love all over again. But if I starve to death, that's it. I'll never see you again. 
Ugh. Couldn't say anything when he said it in that way. It's true, I don't want to starve him to death either. But I can't let him go. He has ruined too many relationships. I've been living this way for hundreds of years. I can't change now. What? Hundreds of years? How old are you? Who knows? Maybe about your age. I don't know my age. Huh? You can't feel the flow of time in Celestia. That's right. Anyway, enough of that. I almost got off course. Anyway, Alan, don't just go after women in love. You're interfering with our business. I told you, didn't I? I wouldn't eat another woman's dreams if you fell in love. Why does it have to be like that? I think that's a peaceful solution. What do you think? Do you have a person you're interested in lately? <laughs> she's been trying so hard to like pair her up with the other guys, but she's, she's not into them this time. I don't because I'm Cupid. It's weird for a god of love to be in love, isn't it? I think it's fine. What about Gil? You had lived with him for a long time. Doesn't he interest you? He's heartbroken for Claris. Besides, I can't think of Gil as a man. <laughs> She's not gonna call him mommy again, is he? <laughs> Poor thing. What about Shelby? Mr. Snail? What are you talking about? He's married. I forgot. What about Raul? Mr. Aconite is an actor. I don't want to get close or it'll, it'll become a scandal. Also, he's a mythomaniac. I shouldn't be near him. Then what about Kesain? He's a glamour parasite. I passed him the other day and he didn't even recognize me. <laughs> oh, rip. <laughs> I did notice that. Well, what about Peter Flage? Peter from Los York TV? Hmm, I don't have any contacts, and we're not even friends. Why, why mention Peter? <laughs> like, I see. Okay, I understand that you're not interested in the men around you at all. I guess I'll have to just live off the dreams of your company's members. <laughs> maybe someone else. Maybe, maybe skip town. Bother someone else's town. This is this is Lynette's stomping ground. Then why do you have to target our customers? I mean, stop targeting only women in love! But it's delicious. Can't help it, you know. Love is not a spice to make a dish better. It's a unique and precious emotion. <laughs> Can't you see that? We're like totally different perspectives here, Lynette. <laughs> it's, like, it's like telling you to just eat tasteless gruel. I don't. Demons don't fall in love. Love is just a temporary feeling. There's no way I'd ever want to. Fine. I know how you think now. I interrupted his words and glared at him. So unfortunate. You can't understand through words. Well, I guess I'll have to make you experience it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, now she's gonna shoot him. I summoned my divine artifact from my pendant and pointed my arrow at Alan. You're about to find out how important love is. Prepare yourself. Alan paled at the sight of the glowing arrow. And for the first time, he had a panicked expression. D don't do that. If a demon is shot by Cupid's bow, it'll disappear. Wait, what? <laughs> I guess it is a divine artifact? Divine and demons probably don't mix well? I tried to stop it, but it was too late. Uh-oh. Alan's expression was filled with fear as the arrow was released. God's power is a deadly poison to demons. This is not good. I don't want to kill people. Well, it's not a person. It's a demon. <laughs> I can rationalize it that way. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't get hit. In a panic, I reached for the arrow and then... Oh, she pricked herself. I managed to grab the arrow just before it pierced Alan. It was at that moment. 
Oh no, this is, this is how they're gonna twist it. She like... I, I guess she- I mean, I guess it could have blossomed to love naturally. She was like that with Raul, just lectured him all the time, but then it turned into love. But I guess she just hates Alan too much. They have to, they have to throw the arrow at her. Okay, I, I wonder how smitten is she gonna be? Huh? Suddenly, my heart beat faster. The blood in my whole body became hot, as if it was boiling. So that all that story is about like the other Cupid who fell in love with Psyche. Was that was that just foreshadowing this whole time? I looked at my hand and saw that I had grabbed the arrowhead of Cupid's arrow. The arrow that would make make me fall in love. As soon as I took my hand off the arrow, Cupid's bow returned to the necklace. But this rising feeling in my heart won't go away. I'm not stupid enough to not know why this is happening. Are you okay? Oh no, she's just gonna fall in love with the demon. Oh, what is he gonna do? I looked up and saw Alan sparkling and shining. Oh no, is he like... Oh no, there are sparkles. He's like, Edward. <laughs> this is a face of a killer. As he just like... Sparkles. <laughs> no, maybe it's my eyes that is causing everything to look so shiny. Because I hurt my hand with Cupid's arrow. I'll fall in love with the person in front of me. Whoopsie. I love... Huh? Oh no. I think I'm in love with you. I couldn't take it anymore. So I clung to Alan's chest. <laughs> what? <laughs> because you said demons would die when wounded by Cupid's arrow. I tried to stop it, but it looks like I was hit. Cupid got shot with Cupid's arrow. So that means you're in love with me. Yes. I looked up and saw what I thought was the coolest face in the world. Oh, now she's in love with this slime ball now. I guess, I guess it got twisted up on her all the times that she shot other people. <laughs> Shot her dad, made him fall in love with a vacuum cleaner. Now this. I'm totally in love. I know, it's the power of Cupid's arrow. But I can't stay calm. I can't erase my love. Can she just like hit herself with a leaden arrow? Or is, this, is it too late for that? So that's what it feels like to fall in love. It was the first emotion I had ever known. My heart ached. I felt kind of embarrassed and I was the happiest I've ever been. Normally, this is to bring people meant to be together. That's a romantic and wonderful thing. I thought on what to do, but perhaps this isn't so bad. Cupid who experiences love is much better than Cupid who has it. <laughs> now she's trying to, okay, trying to rationalize herself. Talking yourself out of... Possibly hitting yourself with a leaded arrow. She's like, oh, okay, this feels this feels good. I like. Hmm. You look like you really like me now. Ellen grabs my chin and stares at me. Even his mean smile looks cool to me. And and I was stunned to see it. It's like I'm blinded by the bright sunshine. So, are your dreams better? Let me try. Oh no, she's gonna, gonna dream eat her again. In the store, there's a bed for fitting. I was pushed down on it and my breathing became harder. Okay, we're moving really fast again. Uh, let yourself go or hug him. I feel like both of these options are the same. It says to just let yourself go, so. Just gonna let him in. Alan laid on me and his eyes stared at me. His true nature as an incubus was revealed, and his demon tail wagged. Oh, it's like a, it's like a doggy. Ah, even that's cool. Feast on me, Alan. <laughs> oh, okay. He went. He went all demon mode. All right. Hi. <laughs> Looks like tonight's meal is quite devoted. I'll make sure you're devoured, just as you wish. Okay. <laughs> what the heck? 
I reach for him and then I let go of my consciousness. I'm getting whiplash here. <laughs> Oh, as Alan's perspective, after feasting on her dreams, I ran out of the store upset. Uh oh, was it? <laughs> what was that dream? I leaned my body against the store window and looked up at the sky in dismay. It was the most delicious dream I've ever had. The acidity is perfect, mellow, and rich. What a dream! It was so delicious that I'm not sure if I'll be able to eat it again. Oh no, it's like he ate, he ate like a whole birthday cake. He's like, it's too much. Lit. But that's weird. I've never had such a delicious dream from a woman falling in love with me before. Dreams from people who loved the dream eater weren't as tasty as dreams from people who loved others. This was common incubus knowledge. Okay, <laughs> I, I guess so. Is it because it's Cupid's dream? Or maybe because she's a goddess? Goddesses are so beautiful and precious that they are incomparable to me, a demon. I stared at her through the glass window as she slept. I always thought she was unapproachable because I'm a dirty demon. I've been trying to make her fall in love with someone else with some help. Well, I guess, I guess you kind of got your way! <laughs> fell in love with you instead. To make Cupid fall in love. That was my mission. And yet, you're in love with me now. I wanted her to fall in love with someone other than me, if possible. Not me, but a human man. But does this mean I've achieved my goal? I got her to know what love is. All that's left is that problem, right? This is all according to plan, except I didn't expect her to find love using Cupid's bow. Hmm. She's in love with Alan now. Is the bow gonna fall off now? Or does something else have to happen? <laughs> is this the right thing to do? The hesitation didn't go away. I woke up and before I knew it, it was morning. My eyelids fluttered open and I was suddenly very elated when I woke. It was because Alan was lying down on the same bed. <laughs> I was just gonna be like, yeah, Alan. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Good morning. Oh, the sparkles are back. Ugh, so cool. After one night, the effects of Cupid's arrow hadn't worn off. I can't help but be respectful to him. Of course, that's because the effect of Cupid's arrow lasts for 30 days. Oh, will it wear off by then? I mean, so, she shoots her arrows at a lot of people, so... Like, I guess like, the feeling usually lasts past 30 days? Let's see. But what do I do with this? I can use a leaden arrow to undo all of this, but I'll lose the joyous feeling of falling in, in and being in love. I was afraid it would fundamentally change me and what I stood for as Cupid, so I didn't use it. Excuses! Excuses! <laughs> hmm? What's wrong? Gently stroking my hair, Alan smiles quietly. He's not fair. He knows I like him, and yet he makes such indulgent gestures. No, it's nothing. Can I hug you? <laughs> okay, sure. Alan nodded as if it was something he was used to saying. I was filled with happiness as I hugged him. Love is such a satisfying feeling. I'm so happy I want to cry. I buried my face in his chest and kissed him on the cheek. He then chuckled and patted me on the back. Wow, she's being like, she's been really, really forward now. <laughs> you are bold when you're in love. I thought the same when I first ate your dream, but it turns out you're also like this in reality. I didn't know either. Hey, Alan. 
Hmm. What did you think of my dream last night? Oh, it was very good. The best I've ever had. It was too much cake. Really? Yeah. I should be thanking God for this miracle. His sweetly whispered voice made me feel dizzy. But I'm glad to hear that my dreams taste so good. Everything turned out alright. Originally, I came to see Alan to protect the customers of Cupid Corp. It's a bit inconvenient, but I'll leave the Golden Arrows effect alone. As long as I'm in love, I can protect Cupid Corp's customers. <laughs> Rationalizing it the best she can. So, will you go out with me? When I looked up at him, Alan was silent for a moment as if he was taken aback. Then he asked me back. You want to go out with me? Can I not? I fell in love with you to save your life, you know. So take responsibility. From now on, only eat my dreams, okay? I thought I said it in a calculated way, but I started to mean it. My heart ached and I clung desperately to him. Protecting the customer should have been my prim primary goal, but now I'm eager to make it official with him. Just for the next 30 days, until the effects of the arrow wears off, go out with me and eat only my dreams. I'm sure Alan won't be able to live without my dreams. He said that mine were the best he's ever had. Oh my god, sounds like a crazy lady. But this is all an excuse. I just want to be with the person I love. Even if these feelings were created by my arrow, it's a real love for me right now. Please. When I looked up at him, he flinched. I'm a scary demon, you know. You don't seem like it. I don't mind. You're too sparkly. You're too nice. You're too nice to her. Do you think it's okay for a goddess to fall in love with a demon? I'm totally fine. I've done a lot of bad things before. I will accept them all. After my determined reply, Alan gazed at me, then finally nodded. Alright. I know it's hard on you, too. Really? I'm so happy. I hugged him as tightly as I could, and he panicked. This is only for 30 days. You understand that, right? Yeah. For 30 days, I can be a real lover with the person I love. <laughs> Don't eat other girls' dreams. Eat only my dreams every day. Alright. With a bitter smile, Alan pats me on the head. He's gonna get fat. He's gonna get fat on all on Lynette's rich dreams. Good. Now we don't have to lose any more members at Cupid Corp. It'll be a relief to not hear customers say, My dreams are better than reality. By the way, don't you have work? Oh. I looked at my watch and saw that it was already time for me to leave for work. Oh no! This is a store on 9th Avenue, and even though it's closer to my office than my house, it only saves 15 minutes. I jumped out of bed and hurriedly got ready to leave. Oh, okay, she's going to work. I thought maybe she'd be so unnabbered that she wouldn't want to work, but I guess she has her responsibilities. Just in time! When I reached my desk on time, I sighed deeply. I was in such a hurry that if Ryuki saw me now, I would think he would frown as hard as he could. He wouldn't even recognize you. You would just be some, like, amorphous black mass. Anyway, now that the Incubus won't be eating our members' dreams anymore, I can focus on matchmaking properly. Oh, did I press A? Okay, I was like, why is it taking so long to load? I started my work as usual. However, I couldn't devote myself 100% as I normally did. Was this due to the magic of love? Oh, yeah. Cupid is distracted. As the popular line goes, I can't think about anything else because all I can think of about is him. I wonder how Alan is doing right now. As I was working in a daze, I suddenly noticed a file left on my desk. 
This is the folder where I filed my Parasite 5 profile sheets. Because they left our service. I think it was my responsibility to discard these. I can sneak a little peek at Alan's profile sheet though, can't I? <laughs> even, it's even something that just has his name on it. She's like, oh, Alan! I looked around before unfolding the profile sheet. There we go, there's Alan's paper. Oh, she's gonna hold it to her, to her chest. It's gonna be like a schoolgirl's notebook, gonna draw hearts all over it. Just by looking at the words Alan had written, I could feel my heart ache as if it were tightening. Wow, you, you got a bad, you got a bad girl. I read through this sheet meticulously for the sake of interview prep, to the point that I could have burnt holes in it. But now it feels different. This is love. It's the emotion I've recommended to so many people. Alan doesn't like cucumbers, and his height is 5'11". My heart was beating faster and faster, as I felt like I was learning something new about him, even though I already knew this information. Why doesn't he like cucumbers? I'm very happy, but... But this is exhausting! I desperately squeezed my eyes shut, unable to endure all this heartfelt love. Despite my confused feelings, my whole body was swept up in the feelings of adoration. My cheeks were burning, my head was hot, my breathing was shallow, and my heart was pounding. Cupid's arrows are powerful, aren't they? It might not be wise to use them carelessly. The effects are not good for everyday life, and yet, before you were just firing away... Maybe I could have persuaded Dad by shooting him with the arrow. <laughs> and he did once, once in a different route. <laughs> the power of the gods can betray one's intentions. Over-reliance on my arrows would be unwise, even for compatible couples. Uh, is this Clarice? Hmm, aren't you kind of cute today? Huh? Oh, yeah, Clarice! I hurriedly put down the profile sheet and looked up to see Clarice chuckling at me. Haha, <laughs> you have the look of someone in love. Is it the guy whose house you stayed at? Is it the guy whose house you stayed at last night? What? What? Well, that is, um... Her eyes lit up while I struggled with my words. Congratulations! That you should live together! If you stayed over, that means you love each other, right? Live together? Hmm, <laughs> as she considers it. That might be a good idea, since he needs to eat my dreams every day. But I feel like it's too early to truly call it love. Still, even though it's only for 30 days, we decided to go out. He also assured me that he would only eat my dreams. I guess it's a mutual benefit for us. I'm gonna ask him if I can stay over tonight. I pulled out my phone and sent a te text asking if I could see him again tonight. I received a quick okay reply. I felt my cheeks relax when I saw Alan's name displayed in, in the sender field. You really like him, don't you? You just snatch him up. Don't worry about me. With a meaningful wink, Clarice went off with her heels clicking. Does she know who we fell in love with? Clarice is much more experienced with men than I am. She instantly knew that I was in love. Ugh. Did I look that obvious? I looked at my phone and saw Alan's text message on the screen. A smile appeared on my face that was so giddy it was obvious to everyone. She's just like fawning over like Alan. Well, he's just... She probably sent like a super long text to like Gil and then just like replies K and she's like, oh, I love him. After leaving work and returning home, I went to Alan's store with my sleepover set. Sleepover, sleepover, yay. When I gently opened the door and peeked inside, Alan was serving a customer. I watched from a short distance as a customer lay down on the fitting bed to try out a pillow. Oh, is she gonna get jealous? Affluent female customer. Wow, this pillow feels good. I won't have any back pain. Yes, we also have low resilience pillows. Would you like to try those as well? If you don't mind the noise, 
I recommend a tube-shaped pipe pillow. It's strong and will last for a long time. Hmm. I'll take this one since I have to go now. Absolutely. I'll wrap it up for you then. Yes, please. I think I'm gonna get a good night's sleep now. Alan was serving customers without his usual lure. He wasn't trying to entice them into the bed to feed. He was keeping his promise. I'm so glad. Thank you for your purchase today. We look forward to serving you again. Yes, and I'll come back if I need a new one. In fact, I'm glad I chose something not as resilient. If I did, I wouldn't have a reason to return. Oh, he wants, she wants to... She's macking on Alan. <laughs> that is true. We also do maintenance, so please feel free to visit, even if you don't need a new pillow. <laughs> ah, yes, I need to take my pillow in for maintenance. Oh, really? Then I'll be back soon. As the customer left, I entered the store. I stared a little at the female customer whose words were suggesting some sort of attraction to Alan. <laughs> She's mad, you jelly. <laughs> I guess this feeling is also a part of being in love. The jealousy of wanting someone to only look at you. No, no, I have to keep an open mind. Oh, welcome. Here I am. I could feel my cheeks heating up at the mere mention of welcome from him. This is not good. I have a feeling I would listen to everything Alan would say right now, even if he was being reckless. That's how powerful love is. My body is dominated by the thought of not wanting him to hate me. I can't wait for this to wear off, but this is the only way to protect people's dreams. Let's go upstairs then. Do you, do you want to go to bed? Oh, I haven't eaten yet. Shoot. I should have eaten. Alan is an incubus. I was just taught that he doesn't need to eat human food. Well, I'm also a goddess, so I don't really need to eat too, but... I can't help it, though. Being in the human realm makes me hungry. Did you just <laughs> try to starve yourself to, to hash it? I see. That's right. Well, let's go to the store, because there's nothing in the fridge right now. We'll have breakfast tomorrow. With a natural flow, Alan hugs me by the waist. Like a boyfriend, he, he would take care of me. That made me happy, so I smiled and nodded. <laughs> so, she's so happy. <laughs> then we went to the supermarket together to buy some food. The two of us pushed the cart and bought tomatoes and pork. I also bought some wine and cheese for us to enjoy together. It's an unnecessary meal for Alan, but he's willing to talk about my ideal evening meal. I asked Alan to carry the heavier bag, and we walked back to his store holding hands. He's, he's really he's really acting out this role as, as devoted boyfriend, wow. Uh, Alan, I'll cook, so please sit down and wait. Rolling up my sleeves, I stood in front of the stove. Want me to cook for you? It's okay, leave it to me! Even though Alan has, has good taste in cooking, it's not enough for me. He cooks food with disregard for nutrients. He doesn't know what it, the human body needs. Alright, you know, last time he just like served a bunch of vegetables and she was like unsatisfied. I wanted to have something... I, I wanted to have someone I like cook for me, but because I saw a lot of food at the supermarket, I couldn't resist the desire to indulge. Huh. Even though you're Cupid, you can cook. <laughs> I, I mean, she, she trained a lot with Gil. She's been living here for many years. Of course. Even Cupid gets hungry in the human realm. Hmm. Demons and gods are quite different. I noticed Alan was standing behind me. He stuck to my back and observed my hands. Wow, so that's how you remove potato sprouts. He placed his hands on my stomach, hugged me from behind, and whispered in my ear. 
That was enough to get my heart rate up. Ugh, I'm so nervous. Hmm. Oh, I don't think you need to peel zucchini. It looks like a cucumber. But did you know it's a type of squash? Oh, really? Random facts. I checked before, so I'm sure. You should hold the peeler like this. Why, why do you check? <laughs> Maybe his weakness is cucumbers? <laughs> Be like, back demon, I have a cucumber. His hands gently traces the back of my hand as he whispers in my ear. Um. Hmm? What? It's nothing. If he keeps talking to me like this, I won't be able to ask him for some space while I cook since it's a bit unsafe. Feeling Alan's warmth on my back, I struggled to keep my composure and continued cooking. But it couldn't help but feel hot all over. The person I love is hugging me from behind. Hmm, I see you use rosemary to season your food. So that's what an appetizing smell is like. I couldn't concentrate at all because he was always giving me feedback. I clenched my teeth and tried my best to control my emotions, and yet... You're a good cook. Hmm. Oh. Ah! <laughs> he suddenly kissed my ear and I froze completely. That's not fair. You're just my temp boyfriend. He just wants to feed for me. To an incubus, a woman with dreams of love is nothing but food to them. I'm sure he's done this before. That's why he touches me so casually. He's really sly. I'd rather have a business-like relationship. But if he continues being sweet to me, I'll want more. I'm not gonna be able to keep my cool. My emotions are soaring and plummeting like a roller coaster. I feel like I'm about to be swept off my feet. Here, it's done! Resisting temptation, I finished cooking the food and placed it on the table. A simple meal of minestrone, bread, and sautéed pork with herbs. Also, some cheese and wine. <laughs> I guess simple! Would you like some? Sure, I'll try it. Alan served himself a small portion and took a seat. We then faced each other and began to eat. Oh, so that's how you season your dish. He ate with a happy smile on his face. As a demon, he likely didn't taste a single bit of the food, but he was quick to praise my cooking. I felt a small pain in my chest at the sight of him. At Parasite House, you said you used to have a grill cook for you. I can't help but wonder how many women have received the same kind of behavior. I assumed a lot of women cooked for him, and at night, Alan would feed on their dreams. I wonder if he kisses them, too. No, no. Jealousy is just exhausting. I'm just in love because of Cupid's arrow. Don't let unnecessary feelings grow. There's no end to jealousy. It's a feeling I've already shaken off before. But because I like him, I get curious. Come on, Cupid. You're just in love by mistake. Still, I can't help but be curious. How has he been treating women so far? Because the music starts up again. She's like <laughs> trying to brush off these thoughts. Is he just using them for food or? No. Oh. It bothered me and I couldn't eat at all. So this is what they call love sickness. I was so hungry earlier, but I lost my appetite. We then finished our small evening meal together and... We took turns taking showers, preparing for the evening. I changed into my pajamas and was ready for bed, so I didn't just take a shower together. <laughs> However, I lingered on the couch. Because sleeping meant having my dreams eaten by Alan. Which means I'll be making love with him in the dream. At that moment, he held his hand out in front of me. A more rugged hand that is bigger than mine. A man's hand. Let's go to sleep. Okay. I stood up from the couch and headed towards the bed. For him to feed on me. 
back, back in dreamland. Come on, kiss me. Incubus are said to appear in dreams as your ideal partner. <laughs> now she's just gonna see, see Alan. <laughs> now that I was in love with Alan, he looked like Alan in my dream. When I closed my eyes, his lips were on mine. A kiss like a touch of cotton that I have had many times in my dreams. It feels good, I think. Since it's a dream, it's fluffy and elusive. And when I wake up, I forget this feeling. I'm kissing the man I love. I can't believe this isn't real. I wish I could remember this experience outside of the dream. Sometimes I can remember these dreams for a while, but they fade over time. And only a sweet, sweet happy feeling remains. This creates a notable difference between dreams and reality. And that's why women are becoming dissatisfied with real life. Here, concentrate. Get on top. Oh, <laughs> gonna cowgirl it. We intertwine our fingers, kiss, and I sit on him. I'm supposed to be in the arms of someone I love, but I feel lonely because this is not reality. Though, it is a situation where I'm being held by someone I love. Even if it is a dream. For some reason, I wanted to cry and clung to him in my dream. It felt so good that I almost forgot myself, but I still remembered that I was dreaming. Why doesn't he let me immerse myself more? It's a dream, you know. Regardless, I continue to seek him greedily. Mm hmm. I woke up suddenly. Is it still nighttime? I turned towards the window and saw Alan standing there. He gazed absently at the at the moon. Isn't the moon beautiful tonight? The moonlight washed over him so that I couldn't see the expression on his face. Still, I got the sense he was lonely somehow. Does Alan ever sleep? Vampire. <laughs> Since he was an incubus, maybe he slept all day or only woke up at night. Although, when we were on Parasite House, he was always awake during the afternoon. Maybe he didn't need to sleep at all. After all, he didn't need to eat. Huh? Oh, you're awake. Seeing that I was awake, he turned to look at me. Yeah. It's only just past midnight. You can go back to sleep. I sat up on the bed. He came over and started stroking my hair. His touch was gentle, as if it were a child, or as if I were a child. The look of genuine compassion in his eyes almost made me recoil. He's really capable of such an expression? He just keeps stroking my hair, and I can't deny how relaxing the sensation was. I could feel my eyelids getting heavy again. Alan! Yes. Please, stay with me. I will. I'm not going anywhere. Just rest easy and get a good night's sleep, Lynette. Okay, good night. I smiled as his hand continued to caress me. The person I love. A lover for 30 days. He acts like... He acts as if he's in love with me, but he's just pretending so he can feed off the most delicious dreams ever. In my dreams, we touch each other with such intimacy, but in the real world, we hardly ever come into contact. And of course, we haven't kissed yet. My heart had started to ache again. I pulled the blanket up over me, feeling neither sadness nor loneliness. All I felt were his hands touching me as I surrendered my head into the pillow he had chosen for me. Next chapter? <laughs> oh, I want to keep going. One page from a lover. Alright, <laughs> Lynette's got it bad now. And I want to see how this goes. But we'll stop now, because knowing... The weird chapter lengths of this, if I keep going, it'll probably come out to two hours.
All right, things are getting things are getting funny <laughs> and interesting. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of good that like she she got pricked by the arrow. <laughs> Like, I wasn't really expecting that. Even though they, they were kind of foreshadowing it. They kept talking about Psyche. Like, okay. Like, now that it actually happens, like, oh, it makes sense. Like, oh, this is how she this is how she's gonna fall in love with Alan. Alright. Anywho. I hope you guys are having a fun time with this. And I'll see you in the next episode. Uh, bye bye.